What's up, everybody? Jordan here from the Fitness, Food, and Freedom podcast, Stoltz Fit YouTube channel, back with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my home gym, giving you guys a full tour of the gym, and also talking about how you can make endless gains in a home gym without even getting your gym membership and have everything in the convenience of your own home. We'll do the gym tour in a little bit. I have a couple things I need to do. It's a warm day here in North Dakota, and if you missed my last video, where I'm living on a farm now, so I'm out on a farm in the middle of North Dakota, and because of that, gym access is a little bit limited, I'm about 30 miles away from the closest gym. Don't really wanna go drive that every day. Instead, I decided to set up a home gym. This isn't even a COVID-19 gym, this is just what I wanted to do. I actually like home gyms. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know, most of my training is done at a home gym actually. So this is my biggest setup so far and pretty much has everything I need. I hope to add to it over time as I go and live here for a while, but this is a good start. All right, welcome to the dog pound, my home gym here up in North Dakota on the farm. Get you guys a nice full view of it. So, I mean, it is a garage, right? So we got all kind of garagey things. Back the car out for you guys so you can see everything in here. But this side is the car side and the tools and all that kind of stuff. Or on this side is the grand gym, right? This is it right here. I try to keep everything pretty compressed, but I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. Right now, I'll give you guys a little tour of everything. Now, it isn't necessarily clean because it's in use. And I figured I was gonna do this video and I thought, oh, I could clean the gym, get it all set up and staged. Then I thought that wasn't really necessarily a good thing, right? Then it looks unused. And I think if I'm doing these videos, I kinda need to walk the walk. So this is a in-use gym, very, very used. Of course, starting over here, we need the sound system, right? So we got a nice big subwoofer, stereo with an aux cord. That is for me to control only. Then I got some accessories up here. A nice uh, fitness, food, and freedom podcast sign. And so I got just normal stuff. This is a chalk bag. It's actually a rock climbing bag that has some chalk in it. Um, arm blaster got on Black Friday one time. The old trusty Inzer single prong belt for the heavy stuff. I got a heavy bag down on the floor because this is uh, one of my conditioning tools, but I actually hang it from this same hook right up here. So this is another video I did on the channel that got mixed reviews about the Titan Fitness pull-up bar. Um, so this is it mounted up on the garage right now. I asked the question, is it worth it? Worth the addition in my previous video about this pull-up bar? And I can say without question it is. It's very strong. Uh, mounting it can be a bit of a pain, so be sure you're prepared for some manual labor there. I did put these boards on since it's just going into this siding right here, but I'm proud of this pull-up bar. This is a nice one. So on the pull-up bar, I do a lot of different things. Of course, pull-ups, but you can also see like some hanging leg raise straps. I got gymnastic rings hanging up here for basically neutral grip pull-ups is what I use that for. And then of course, this thing, which is kind of uh, a new addition this year, or at least this last couple months, uh, pretty much it's a lat pull down system, like a cable system that I made. So we got a pulley from Home Depot up there, a nice cable, this isn't too long, I, maybe it's like eight feet or something like that. And then a couple carabiners that can handle a ton of weight, a loading pin from Titan Fitness, and then I just plate load it. This is the next piece of equipment, I guess. Here I got just a horse stall mat. I plan on getting three more, so one here, one there, one there, and one there for four mats, four mat floor mats. And boy, I got all kinds of equipment. I'll try to run through it quick, I guess, but these are tires, bumper plates. I got weight on here from yesterday's workout, but See there, I just bolted a five pound plate to the tires, to the wheels, and each one of these is 50 pounds. They take up about the same space as a 45 pound plate and essentially act as rack poles, um, bumpers for things where I would drop the weight 
Just kind of keeps the floor nice too since it's concrete. Along with the cable set up here, I have bands and I have a whole bag of them. This is one of the bands. These are, I think they're body elastic bands. I have a bag of them over here. This is all the bands, a whole collection of bands I've gotten over the years. Lots of accessories, which I'm not gonna go over. This is kind of a silly thing. This is a walker, like an old people walker. Do dips on this. The key with the home gym is you gotta innovate. Find creative solutions to expensive gym equipment, then you don't end up spending a fortune on the gym equipment. Pretty much the main thing I spent money on for my home gym was the weights themselves. Everything else was kind of accumulated over time. That cable setup was probably only 25, 30 bucks total by the time I put it together. This little squat rack here, pretty much got for free with the weight equipment that I bought on um, Facebook Marketplace. So got the barbell there, another barbell here. That's where the bulk of the money is in this and everything else is made myself or um, kind of just rigged together like that walker. The bench is something else I wanted a much better bench on. This was a big upgrade. The Titan Fitness bench. Um, so far it's okay. I have mixed feelings on it. I can do a video on that separately if you guys are interested, but essentially pretty stable bench, maybe a little bit poorly made and a pain to adjust, but I'll talk about that later. One other thing that I did spend money on, this was about two Black Fridays ago, which is when I kind of splurged a little bit on home gym and fitness stuff is dumbbells and these are Titan Fitness dumbbells. Big fan. This is something that made a huge difference in my home gym, allowed me to triple my exercise library that I could do. It's these plate loaded dumbbells, but you can see they're very small plates. So these are each 10 pounds. You can see each one of these is 10. This is an 85 pound dumbbell and it's actually not stupidly big, right? I had these that came with my weight set and these are the classic ones you could get at probably any sporting goods store where you plate load Olympic plates on. But those get really big once you start piling on weights. All right, so now the big question of the video, which is how do you make endless gains in a home gym? When your equipment's limited, your space is limited, you might be in your basement, in a spare bedroom, and maybe in a garage. So I think there's four key things you have to have in your gym. And like I did, you can accumulate these over time. So like, for example, you don't need 700 pounds of weight from the get-go. A normal sporting goods store, 300 pound weight set or on Craigslist or Facebook, plenty to start. You can get a lot done with that amount of weight. So number one, of course, for the home gym is gonna be a weight set. This is the most obvious one. This is the most unoriginal one. And I like to think that my other ones are gonna make you think a little bit more. I think a weight set is super important and a lot of weight. I think it's going to really open up the opportunities if even if you start small, you end up with a lot of weight. Like if I have seven, 800 pounds of weight, I can load up heavy exercises, do partials. I can do any variation of movements. I would include in the weight set some kind of rack and bench. But as you saw, I don't even have a power rack and I have been dabbling in the home gym space for years. I just make do with an adjustable bench and a cheap little squat rack that came with the weight set, which you can probably find for 20, 30 bucks on Facebook. As long as you're careful, you don't need a super incredible power rack in my opinion. Um, once you start messing with one rep maxes and really, really heavy work, maybe you do, but for a lot of the training I do, I'm able to safely unrack and rack in this thing. I only had a couple incidents where you just easily dump the weight. So no collars, use just a normal cheap squat rack and get a nice bench, I think are important. But you need weight and that can either be barbells or dumbbells. I actually think you don't have to start with both. If I could do it over, I'd probably get the dumbbell set before I get the barbell set. The barbell was for big strength work at the time I wanted to do, but if I was just after gaining muscle, losing fat, I would get the adjustable dumbbells because you can do so much with them and they take such a little amount of space compared to big weight sets. So that's number one. Number two, I think it's important to have something that changes the strength curve. So what would fall under that category is cables and bands. Cables, in my opinion, are gonna be a little bit better just because you can load them a little bit better, bands a little bit tougher to load. So cables is really good. I have this little pull down setup that I made just now, but actually all I do on that is face pulls, pull downs, 
neutral grip pull downs, and uh, tricep push downs. Everything else I use bands for. So if I was starting a home gym, I would get dumbbells and bands and some kind of bench or a squat rack if I chose a barbell over the dumbbells. But you need something that changes the strength curve a little bit where for a band it's gonna be harder on its totally stretched position, which is, if I'm doing a chest fly with these, it's gonna be all the way stretched forward, right? If you're doing a curl, it's gonna be all the way at the top is the hardest, where a weight might be a little bit different, a dumbbell. With the cables, it's just more constant tension through the whole mo movement, so if I'm doing a push down with a band, it's gonna be the hardest at the bottom because it's fully stretched. With a cable, it's gonna be hard throughout the whole movement, which is different compared to a weight. So I would get something, of course, if you're just starting a home gym in your spare room, basement, or garage, go with the bands, because it's gonna be a lot more portable, cheaper, and get pretty much the same benefit. The next thing I think you need is some kind of conditioning tool. And this can vary across the board. I have a lot of stuff for conditioning. I have an exercise bike, I have the punching bag, I have the sled, I have the farmer's walk handles, I have sandbags. I have a lot of that odd object, strongman type stuff, but that's because I like to do it. It's something I enjoy but you don't need that stuff. And if you just want to make progress, lose fat, gain muscle, get in shape, one thing is plenty. Get a sled that you can pull from a harness, get an open field of grass so you can sprint, build a sandbag, which I'll explain in a future video because I actually have the supplies to build new sandbags and I'm gonna film that and let you guys know how to do it. But you need something to get some kind of conditioning in. I think that some kind of cardio activity or the conditioning after your lifts is so important. A lot of people ignore it when they shouldn't. It's a health thing and it's just being in shape for life. So you can go simple on this. You can go for walks, go for runs, ride a bike. It can be that simple or you can experiment with some more fun things in my opinion like sandbags, sleds, and stones. And the last thing I think you need is things that make your environment. So I'm gonna put environment. And what I mean by that is it needs to be a place you want to go. So for example, I have a heater sitting right over there in the corner. I have nice overhead lights in here, and that's all new stuff since I got here. So when I moved into the house, first few workouts were freezing cold in the garage, and definitely made me want to skip the workouts if I came out in North Dakota winters and it's negative 20 degrees. So a heater's a must up here in the Midwest, and I think the overhead lights added a lot of energy. Those dim garage yellow lights, and maybe not want to come in here as bad because it's a little bit dingy, a little bit dirty, kind of a tired feel. These bright fluorescent lights really help me. And of course the stereo, nice boom in music, gets the heart pumping, gets you feeling good, send out some positive vibes into the air, all that stuff. I think that that's all really important. So do what you need to do to make your home gym somewhere where you like. Maybe it's a Vikings jersey up in the corner, maybe it's a loud stereo, maybe it's a TV playing sports center. Or maybe it's some really, really good half natty lighting. I don't know, but whatever it is, make it somewhere you want to go so you actually put in the work. So that's it, guys. Thanks for stepping into the dog pound for a minute so you can see my home gym where I train. I'm doing some more videos in here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I felt like I glossed over a lot of this equipment. So let's give it one more time over. We've got the stereo, the pull-up bar, the pull-down station, the tire deadlift, the two barbells, the bench, the squat rack, the weight rack, the sandbags, which have to be made, and the strongman conditioning equipment over there. If you have questions on anything, just shoot it down in the comments. I'll reply either in the comments or make a video on the subject. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.